It was 1971 when 26 year old Spencer Dale traveled to Phnom Penh, Cambodia for a brief adventure and found himself embroiled in a war. I went to Cambodia in 1970 because I was inspired by Sean Flynn, Errol Flynn's son, who was there working as a photojournalist. Cambodia was constantly in the media and looked so interesting. I was hearing about the coup d'etat on television and I wanted adventure. I wanted to do what Sean Flynn was doing. Cambodia was in the middle of one of the bloodiest civil wars in modern history. The ruthless Khmer Rouge on one side and the US-backed forces of General Lon Nol on the other. Into this strode Spencer Dale, Australian tourist, a young man with a movie camera and a taste for adventure. Cambodia's capital Phnom Penh was then a beautiful and lively city, largely untouched by the war, which raged in the countryside just a few miles away. I went sightseeing around the city and was captivated by the people. They were very outgoing and very friendly. One day I saw this funeral that was happening in a large villa. There were many monks and incense was burning. I filmed this since to me it was magical. At that time I had no idea that the body of the man inside the coffin was the father of the man who would save my life in three days time. Spencer met a soldier who promised to introduce him to the legendary General Norodom Chantaransai, a war hero of royal blood. So Spencer headed off to the front line. I was taken to a pagoda by his lieutenant, and I was told that I would meet General Chantrasai the next morning. The afternoon was very hot, so I took off my shirt and I had a white t-shirt on underneath. The Khmer Rouge were watching out in the rice paddies, and when they noticed my white skin and my relative height, they decided that I was an American advisor. And that night, they came to get me. The Khmer Rouge launched an all-out attack on the pagoda. Luckily for Spencer, General Chanaransai also heard about the presumed American advisor and sent troops to rescue him. The next morning when I met him at his base in Kampong Spur, we had an early morning lunch and we talked for hours. It was the beginning of a friendship with a Cambodian warlord that would see this young man return to the country 15 times in five years. The energy between myself and General Chantrasay was just electric. It was like I had found a long lost brother or a new father figure. Spencer quickly earned the trust of the general and his commanders, and in turn, he fell in love with the people and their fight for freedom. I think my commitment to him and his cause began right then and there. That's how much it affected me. I made up my mind that I would do whatever I could to help him and his people. Under Chantaransai's protection, he routinely went to the front lines to document on film what he had witnessed. You didn't have time to think. There were a thousand things happening at one time. All my time was focused on operating the camera because I tried to capture as much of this as I could, where it was possible, without being too foolhardy, without exposing myself more than I should. And from that point on, whenever I went out into the field, whenever I was using the camera to photograph combat, direct combat, very close combat, people being killed beside me, being shot beside me, being wounded beside me, it must sound crazy, but I had no fear. I had absolutely no fear. Every battle over there, to me, was a major battle. An armoured personnel carrier that I had been riding in for the past week was hit by an RPG, a rocket-propelled grenade. It went up in flames. Half the crew were killed, the other half burning. My gut had told me to ride in the other APC that day. The general had given him a handgun to carry for his protection a gesture that would save his life a second time in later years when he was again targeted by Khmer Rouge fighters. My commitment to him and the 13th Brigade and the Cambodian Army as a whole with the other commanders, other generals, was total and it went on for many years even after the end of the Cambodian War. God guided me through that whole war, through every battle, from the first time and it's just amazing. It's just incredible how many people were killed around me. I think I was just very lucky. <laughs>